Hi guys, welcome to Spirit Entrepreneur channel. We study biographies and histories of great people here. Our aim is to gather entrepreneurial spiritual people. Today we will talk about John D. Rockefeller, who is the richest man in modern history. His biographer wrote about him. What makes him so problematic and why he still evokes such ambivalent reactions is that his good side was as good as the bad side was bad. Rarely does history create such contradictory personalities. Let's talk about J.D. Rockefeller. He was born in 1839 in Richford, New York State. He was second child in six children family of William Rockefeller and Eliza Davison. We must say that his parents were people of great contrast of personalities. His mother was a Puritan Baptist, radically following the doctrine of the church, while his father William Rockefeller, nicknamed Devil Bill, was a traveling salesman of pseudo-medical specifics, something like snake syrup that treats all diseases. He was considered a swindler, which he himself did not hide, often telling boasted stories of how he managed to fool his clients. He was also a bigamist, in addition to a relationship with Eliza, he had mistress with whom he also had children. The Rockefeller's family led a vagabond lifestyle, traveled between cities for Devil Bill sales business. His father taught him cunning, while his mother taught him humility, saving and perseverance. Fact number two, at the age of 16, after graduating from high school, Rockefeller took 12-week accounting course, after which he began working for a small commercial company. There, as he says, he savored in numbers, and his favorite activity was exploring the reduction of transport costs. This skill will later help him become an oil tycoon. After two years, he resigned from his job because he was denied a rise. He decided to start his own company, and together with Maurice Clark, he created a company for trading agricultural goods. They borrowed $4,000, which is equivalent for today's 100000 Fact number three. Oil deposits were discovered near Pittsburgh, and oil fever began in that area. Many people saw the possibility to get rich on oil. John Rockefeller saw it as well. He shut down his company based on agricultural goods and decided to build a raffinery in the fields of Cleveland. There were no cars back then. Oil was used mostly for lamps that illuminated the world at the time. Until then, it was whale fat that was used for lightning lamps, but it became more and more expensive, and the world was looking for substitute that turned out to be oil. Fact number four, when Rockefeller was 22 years old, the civil war broke out in USA. It was then possible to legally buy a mercenary, pay someone to take part in the world for you. And that's what Rockefeller did. He bought several mercenaries who fought for him at war. He also supported the Union Army financially, like many wealthy people at the time. Rockefeller was an abolitionist, he opposed slavery, voted for Abraham Lincoln, and became a member of the Republican Party. Fact number five. In 1865, he bought out his partner and came into personal possession of a raffinery in Cleveland. He then opened an office in Manhattan to encourage the largest national banks to lend him money. He sensed the expansion of oil market. The end of the war caused a large influx of new immigrants to the United States and the railway also began to appear. With his business partners Andrews and Flagler, they began to take out large loans and invest in the development of the raffinery, while reducing costs by processing oil byproducts. It was his Puritan mother who taught him to avoid waste and as she often said, by saving, people get rich. In a short time, with his partners, they were already owners of two raffineries and already the largest refining oil company in the world. Fact number six, at the end of the Civil War, Cleveland was already the largest oil production centers in the United States. Rockefeller closed the company and opened Standard Oil of Ohio. These times were called price war times. Emerging new industries such as oil and railroads were a place of ruthless and fierce competitive struggle, also in the railway industry. For example, oil cartels were created that negotiated 50% reduction for oil transport, 
which meant they could eliminate their competition with prices. This caused protests from independent entrepreneurs and eventually government interfered in the monopolistic practices. Soon the rates were normalized by the government. Fact number seven. Unmoved by the attacks of the press and politicians, Rockefeller continued to buy competitive raffineries and increase sales efficiency. He also maintained constant pressure on railways to receive transport discounts. At the negotiation meetings with rivals, he used to show them accounting books and present at what time he was able to bankrupt them by lowering his prices. In this way, he bought 22 out of 26 local rivals. He also had policy of reducing waste. While his competition poured oil waste into rivers, he hired people for seeking use of oil byproducts. This is how more than 300 petroleum-based products were created, from tar for lubricating roofs to cosmetic petroleum of even jelly or chewing gum. In late 1970s, Standard Oil owned 90% of the world's oil processing. Fact number eight, sharp price competition and anti-monopoly law. Huge Standard Oil expansion caused an avalanche of social outrage. The press and government accused Rockefeller of unethical market practices. He came to a conflict with the owner of railroad and one day stopped all transport, saying that he was going to transition to pipe distribution. When Theodore Roosevelt became president, he became Rockefeller's biggest opponent. This led to anti-monopoly law and the division of Rockefeller's trust into smaller enterprises. At a crucial point, Standard Oil included 20,000 oil wells, 4,000 miles of pipelines, 5,000 road trunks and employed over 100,000 people. Fact number nine. In the end, Rockefeller abandoned his dreams of controlling all oil processing, which he expressed in his own words. We came to the conclusion that the public could completely turn against us if we actually processed all the extraction of oil. Over time, foreign competition also appeared. Robert Noble, financed by Rothschilds, opened wells in Russia, whose kerosene also entered international market. Fact number 10. It was the most difficult time for Rockefeller. He suffered from broadened depression and gastric problems. Stress led him to disease of losing his hair from whole body and they never grew back again. At the age of 74, Rockefeller opened Rockefeller Foundation. His life maxim was earn as much as possible, save as much as possible, give away as much as possible. He developed the concept of philanthropy, making it more efficient. He believed that putting money for a wrong purpose could cause more trouble than any other financial activity. His son, John Rockefeller Jr., continued his father's philanthropic ac activities as well as his children. Throughout his whole life, John Rockefeller was giving 6% to charities and then 10%. This is what his mother taught him. He also supported Baptist movements and churches. At the age of 86, he wrote a summary of his life. I was early taught to work as well as play. My life has been a one long happy holiday. Full of work and full of play, I dropped the worry on the way. And God was good to me every day. He died at 98 years old and his grave is on the Cleveland Cemetery. That's all for today. Help us with your subscription and see you in other videos. Hey!